think people are surprised when you say you've been out on a fishing boat for a week, but not overly. And there's more and more ladies coming into the job now. My name's Ruth and I'm a fisheries observer with CFAS, which is the Centre for the Environment, Fisheries and Agriculture Science. Today we're out with Mark and his crew, Aka, on the Sea Seeker. New boots. Okay. New boots, or just clean boots? Just clean, yeah. And I've got Lisev. She's my scientific assistant for the day. She's an onshore sampler, usually, so she does mostly market sampling. But I need a spare pair of hands, and she needs more sea training experience, so it's a perfect match. I'm called a fisheries observer because I'm just here to collect scientific data um, and see literally what Mark fishes up. And we've got no enforcement role, I'm just literally here to collect that scientific data. I did marine biology at Plymouth Uni, applied for a job at CFAS. It was lab based and then I got the opportunity to do a couple of day trips out on boats. Uh, I realised that was much more fun, much more interesting much more engaging and that's when I realised this is what I wanted to do. Today we've come fishing out of West Bay. We're working on a fisheries science project to look at undulate ray and we hope to catch the ray, um, assess their vitality, their health, uh, tag them and hopefully release them Fishermen like Mark um, are great skippers. You know you've guaranteed a trip out. Um, he gives you access to his catch. It's just easy going, great to work with. I'm only the skipper and the owner of this boat, the Sea Seeker. And um, we work in a mixed fishery, trawling mainly with an uh, otter trawl. We try and change the way we tow. We tow for lesser time to try and stop the mortality of the fish. I've had a lot of friends who kind of frown upon what I do for a living until they've actually come out with us on board. And they were under the illusion that we catch tons of fish and throw half of it back dead, which in reality doesn't happen. I mean, with the dogfish, as you can see, they're hardly, hardly, hardly fish. I would think they all go back and live. And our discards are here in a mixed fishery are very, very minimal anyway. There's no room for the uh, bulk greed fishing anymore. It's about catching less, keeping the fish at a much better quality and looking after it. Hence why I've had the money spent on the refrigerated fish room. Um, we carry ice. Rubbish wise, we tow up a fair bit of litter. We'll collect that. We're at the moment making arrangements with the harbour master for that to be taken away free of charge. So it's the one way of just helping out. It's never going to be 100% green but then we can do what we can to make it as green as possible. Uh, the project started after I'd met Ruth. We'd done quite a lot of work together on various sampling trials, and we were talking about the undulate rays and the fact that the discards ban is going to stop us being able to throw them back when they seem to look like they're going back fine. So Ruth took it aboard herself to put together a project. At the moment, if Mark catches undulate ray he can't keep them because he hasn't got quota so they can't be landed and he releases them healthy back into the wild and the fishermen catch these ray every day they say they're healthy alive and kicking and they're happy to put them back and they swim off once the discard ban comes in these rays like everything else will have to be landed it will be waste fish it seems criminal to land fish with no market and no quota that are going to go to whatever for disposal, uh, whether they could be going back and living. It's a mixed fishery, so these fish are in amongst everywhere we fish, so it chokes the ability for us to go fishing for other species. Thanks babe, if you just pop that down there. Right, and we'll come and get our station set up. So if we can find a way and prove that they will go back and they will survive with the use of the data tagging uh, survivability study, then it means hopefully it'll be not included in the discards ban. If we can prove 
by tagging them and collecting the data that they're healthy after release, um, we will hopefully get an exemption from this ban and he can continue putting them back alive once he's caught them. My name is Lizette Fiennes and I have been working for CFAS for five and a bit months now. Even though I'm onshore, I really am quite keen to go and be offshore. So I, I kind of jump on any opportunity I can to get any training. So yeah, so today I'm learning how to assess the health of um, the rays, excellent, good or poor. So it's got the um, spiracle and the startle reflex. So it's got all the reflexes. Um, any injuries? No, no injuries from the trawl, no bleeding or abrasions. She's clean, so she's good to tag. So we're gonna put a tag in her and release her. Lovely. Away she goes. We've been out tagging with Mark before and we've already got some data back from that. So how are we looking on the engine array so far? It's... We haven't crunched the numbers yet, but I mean, initial results are good, you know, yeah. from the fishermen. But we've had some more tag fish that have yeah. been alive back anyway. So. Yeah, so and all the fishermen say the same, they're alive and kicking when they get back in. So yeah, so initial results are good, we've got good returns and hopefully the data will show what we wanted to. Excellent, it's great news, yeah. it's what we need to know, isn't it? Fishermen like Mark are great to work with. I think fishermen have a bad reputation as being sort of difficult. Um, I don't think that's true. We wouldn't be able to do our job without without the help of the fishermen. I like working with the scientists because um, I'm quite interested in what they do. I'm quite interested in the fish itself. I believe that we need to look after our fish stocks. We need to know what's in the ocean. Um, we, we need the science to set the quotas. Without the science, they're not going to allow us to catch the stocks. With the science, there is a chance. Eventually, if the data shows that the stock has recovered enough, there may be quota put back in place so the fishermen can fish them in a controlled manner. So that's great for fishermen long term. I think we're really privileged to be able to work with fishermen um, because although as scientists and there's a lot that we can teach them, there's also a lot that they can teach us and working together we just get the best blend of information and knowledge and share it and hopefully with that collaboration we can really keep marine life as pristine as possible whilst also keeping their livelihoods and fishing going. If you want to be a fisheries scientist um, or any kind of marine biologist you need to be really determined and just keep at it because it is, it is hard, it's really hard to get into. It's very competitive but it's totally worth it once you're there. I would absolutely encourage anybody else to do this job even if just for a short time to be an observer you don't have to go the academic degree route a lot of observers are ex-fishermen fishermen walk straight into it they're they're excellent they know they're good with boats they know how to handle fish it, it, they're naturals really I um, mean look around <laughs> what's not to love <laughs> it's amazing yeah no it's it's such a great job it's really varied um, really flexible I, I'm learning constantly new things which is really cool um, it's just I always wanted a job where I'd be on or near the sea and every single day when I go to work I'm on or near the sea and that's just amazing uh, I like the freedom this job gives you I work all along the south coast I don't 